let's take a look at a nerve ending a little bit more closely and see how the ion flows are regulated. So here's our nerve impulse. It's moving along the axon, being propagated, until that potential difference reaches a channel protein, which in this case is a calcium channel protein. It's a voltage-gated calcium channel that opens up in response to that little electrical jolt that was propagated down the axon. The calcium enters the cell interacts with synaptic vesicles, causing them exocytotically to fuse with the membrane of the nerve ending. And the neurotransmitters are released into the synaptic cleft, that is the space between the nerve ending and the membrane of the responding cell. And the neurotransmitters then bind to receptors on the responding cell. The response is that a ligand-gated sodium channel opens beginning an action potential. So what we've seen here in nerve action is the propagation of a nerve impulse that is mediated by changing conformation of ion channels all along the axon, resulting in that nerve impulse which began could be as much as a foot or two away. You know, these some of these nerves have very, very long axons. And that voltage difference, that change in potential of the membrane, reaches the nerve ending and has these consequences. First, activating a voltage-gated calcium channel, allowing calcium in. The calcium will activate ligand-gated channels that cause synaptic vesicles containing the neurotransmitter to actually fuse with the membrane. That's a bit that I left out before. And then the neurotransmitter itself is a ligand binding to a responding cell neurotransmitter receptor, which is in fact the sodium channel that opens to allow sodium to rush into the responding cell and initiate the action potential.